The number one question you all have about 8K is, do you need it and can you tell the difference? Well, the answer isn't black and white. We're going to get into it in this review. So go ahead, strap in, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because we're going deep on LG's new 75-inch 8K nanocell TV. AK is video's new IT format, and if you're suffering from spec whiplash, you're not alone. For most of us, 4K has just started to hit its stride. What you need to know is this. 8K is not double the resolution of 4K. It's actually four times the resolution of 4K. It is the equivalent of having four 4K displays in one 8K TV. There are 16 HD displays in a single 8K TV, for those of you still on the 1080p wagon. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there isn't a wealth of 8K content on the market right now. So any 8K display, the LG included, is going to have to upscale. And why would you want 8K? Because viewers all want one thing, size. Consumers love a big TV, which is why today we find ourselves in a bit of an arms race as it relates to display size. It's not that 8K is going to be drastically different or noticeable on displays, say, 50 to 65 inches, especially from distances of 8 or more feet. But if you increase the size of your screen without increasing the distance you sit from said screen, resolution starts to matter. While front projection setups, even ultra short throw ones, tend to get people to adhere to proper seating distances, flat panel TVs, not so much. People tend to do whatever they want with big TVs, including sit too close. Because we're all chasing that cinema experience in our home, and part of that experience is a big screen. What people don't consider when they sit in a movie theater is there's quite a bit of distance between them and the screen. And as a result, projectors don't have to be all that resolute in order to give you a proper experience. Even a billboard can look tack sharp from your car, but get up close and personal with it, and it's pretty fuzzy. So what we have is this, people wanting a big screen that they can sit closer to. And if this sounds like you, then maybe front projection setups aren't for you, but perhaps LG's new 8K display is. The honest truth about any video format in today's digital age is this. It's all compressed and it's all being interpreted. And to do this, you need processing. And in the case of the LG, you need a lot of it. Because a lot of the things that you're going to watch through an 8K display are going to be upscaled from lesser formats. Take for instance HD. HD has roughly 2 million pixels. And when viewed through an 8K display, they have to be upscaled to 33 million pixels. 4K has roughly 8 million pixels that then have to be upscaled to 33 million pixels with 8K. The LG features an Alpha 9 Gen 3 processor, which uses the brand's latest AI upscaling. Now, LG claims some deep learning here, whereby the TV kind of knows what it is that you're watching and enhances it accordingly. And it does the same for sound. This being one of LG's top tier displays, it is of course a nanocell display. And nanocell is not to be confused with quantum dot. Now, nanocell uses a nanoparticle filter layer that enables this TV to achieve a lot of its color fidelity and accuracy, not to mention contrast prowess. But because it's nanocell, it is obviously not an OLED display. No, this is an LED backlit LCD, a full array backlit LED display. And yes, it uses an IPS panel. And no, I don't care. And neither should you. Aside from its resolution, the LG is also an HDR compatible display. It has support for HDR10 Pro as well as HLG Pro and Dolby Vision IQ. There's even Dolby Atmos for audio. Like all LG models before it, the 8K nanocell uses WebOS as its operating system, and this gives you access to streaming services such as Netflix, Disney+, and Apple TV natively. And for you gamers out there, the LG sports a host of gaming enhancements, including AMD FreeSync Premium, low input lag, and a native refresh rate of 120Hz. All that said, let's get to the real reason why we're here. What's it like, and how does it perform? Out of the box, the LG ships in an eco-friendly picture mode. If you watch this channel, you know those are not ideal. 
I measured all of the picture presets and found that the Cinema, ISF, and Filmmaker modes to be the most accurate. Now I left Filmmaker mode alone because that is a preset that aims to take some of the guesswork out of how to set your TV. Instead, I opted to calibrate the Cinema profile in order to compare and contrast between Filmmaker mode and a full calibrated picture preset, and to see which differences, if any, there were. It should be noted that Filmmaker mode is largely equal to Cinema in terms of its grayscale and color accuracy. It is, however, less bright and features no motion interpolation or dynamic anything. I love Filmmaker mode, so if you're looking for a preset that you can just sort of set and forget, this is the one I would choose. Nanocell displays are not what I would call bright. We know this, so take a 100% brightness pattern, albeit in a limited window, and you may only achieve 750 to say 900 nits, depending on your picture preset. Take that same brightness pattern and stretch it full screen, and you'll probably end up with around 500 nits. This isn't a bad thing. In fact, it puts the nano cell in the same ballpark as OLED, and OLED, as you know, has long been my reference standard for image fidelity. Still, even in cinema mode, the LG requires some fairly hefty calibration to its grayscale as it favors red and green out of the box, with an average delta E or margin of error of over 5. It should be noted that anything under 3 is going to be hard to discern with the naked eye, and the closer you get to 0, the closer you are to perfection. Now, colors, on the other hand, were far more accurate. The good news is, is the LG can be brought into proper spec thanks to its calibration controls. With the proper local dimming settings selected, I chose medium, it is possible for this nano cell display to get close to absolute black. So close that I think a lot of viewers would have a difficult time discerning it from OLED. So how close is close? Try 0 0.0035 nits. Basically black. And don't at me with your IPS nonsense. It's 2020, and nanocell technology and local dimming have made it possible for TVs like this to achieve close to OLED level blacks. Once calibrated, the LG's picture is incredible. It's pretty good, straight out of the box, but with some adjustments, it's up there with the very best. Skin tones are natural, provided the director hasn't turned up the orange for effect. Colors are rich and vibrant, especially the primaries, and all of it is made all the more organic by the presence of OLED-like contrast in those deep, rich blacks. Also, colors don't really change in hue or brightness as you move off axis the way that they do with lesser displays, though black levels are affected subtly. But as you can see in this video, the viewing angle of this TV is pretty impressive. Overall, edge fidelity was superb, which was impressive considering that 99% of the content we watched through this TV was upscaled, so the fact that all of the lines weren't a stair-stepped mess was nice. Now, the upscaling in this display kept things like macro blocking and digital noise at bay, though at some times I felt they weren't able to fully keep up with HD broadcasts. What I mean by this is like watching the news could produce a decidedly softer image than when watching HD cinematic content. But I find this to be true with even 4K displays. Gaming, especially in HDR through the LG, was incredible. And its game mode did produce noticeable improvements in terms of motion clarity while not altering the grayscale or color accuracy that I spoke about a moment ago. And playing my favorite game of the moment, The Last of Us 2 in 8K, albeit upscaled from HD, was awesome. If this is what LG can do with a lowly PS4 signal, I cannot wait to get my hands on a PS5 later this year. And while I cannot speak to the true input lag of the LG, it seemed pretty responsive to me, though I'm going to go ahead and blame it on a few of my deaths in The Last of Us 2. You understand. And when you feed this LG a true 8K signal, even a compressed one, there is nothing like it. There's only a smattering of 8K content available to consumers right now. Most of it is on YouTube, and that means it is highly compressed. But even then, it is incredible. So there is no way that I can convey to you the detail and inherent sharpness present in 8K in a video such as this. So you're just going to have to take my word when I say there is a difference, and it isn't always subtle. And for those of you who are curious about the internal speakers of this particular TV, we don't spend a lot of time dissecting the sound of internal speakers. We usually rely on outboard sound bars or speaker systems. But I have to tell you, the speakers in this particular TV are pretty good. So good, in fact, that 
when we were going through the initial setup process and the, the AI sound adjustments were being made, we actually thought our soundbar was connected when in fact it wasn't. So if you're looking for a TV that has pretty good sound all on its own, the AK Nano Cell is worth considering. So the question of the day has to be, is the LG AK Nano Cell worth it? If you're already pretty well vested in 4K, I say make the leap. But if you're still hanging on to HD, either by choice or because of bandwidth limitations, wait. While the Alpha 9 processor's upscaling is impressive, it's not a miracle worker. And while some HD content simply cannot be made to look 8K or even 4K, but I think this would be true of any 8K display available on the market right now. Watching HDR content through the LG was incredible. Even with the panel's slightly lower light output, it was still bright enough and able to be enjoyed in ambient light conditions. Now with respect to Dolby Vision, I do want to bring something up that I experienced, and I'm bringing it up just in case you experience it as well. But I did encounter some fairly dramatic light shifts when watching certain Dolby Vision content on one app, but I wasn't able to replicate it when watching that same content through another app. This leads me to believe that it is something to do with the Dolby Vision encoding and not an error with the TV itself. Now, if you experience this, I found the workaround to be to put the Dolby Vision picture setting in either its standard or game mode. Again, I don't think it's the fault with the TV, but it is something to be aware of. And lastly, with respect to backlighting, I do think that the sheer size of this 75 inch display may be just a little bit too large for LG's full array backlighting scheme. While halos and ghosting were kept to a minimum with high contrast images or test patterns, it still was possible to see some halos in certain situations. Now in everyday real world viewing, they were kept to an absolute minimum, but it is worth noting. Now in terms of light uniformity, this panel isn't perfect. There is some minor to moderate vignetting in the corners and around the edges. Again, in real world viewing, it's not as noticeable, but I am bringing it up to some of you who may notice and decide to harp on it. And as for how does the LG compare to other 8K models on the market right now, specifically from Sony and Samsung, the truth is I don't know because I haven't had time to test those TVs because all of them are so new. But I will say this, if you are in the market for a new TV and you are looking at a screen size larger than 75 inches and you want it to work in ambient light while being able to sit closer to it, maybe because you have a smaller space, I would urge you to consider the LG 8K over a comparable 4K one. And as to the debate over front projection versus 8K, this is far easier to settle. I say go with the LG 8K Nano Cell all day because you're gonna to have to invest so hard in your front projection setup to match the performance of the LG. But the biggest reason why I would advocate for you to splurge on the LG 8K display is the fact that Hollywood movies are literally coming home. Walt Disney's Mulan is skipping theaters now entirely and debuting on Disney Plus in a couple of weeks. And this is somewhat a first, especially for a large tentpole product like Mulan but there have been cracks forming in the distribution dam and it's simply not going to hold. So consider the paradigm shift that we find ourselves in for more money, resources, and energy are about to be poured into content in a way like never before. So while not perfect, the LG 8K NanoCell TV is arguably better than any home cinema projector on the market right now. It's even better than some commercial ones. So if you take movie watching seriously, I highly recommend taking a look at the LG 8K NanoCell. So that's it. That is my review of LG's 8K NanoCell TV. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And while you're down there, what are your thoughts on 8K in general? Is it too soon or is it just in time? Let me know. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, ring the bell. And if you found this video useful, please do consider using some of the links down below. It is a great way to show your support for the channel and the work that we do here. If you're looking for another way to support us, consider becoming a member. You can click join right next to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. And that is it for today. I actually have to get out of here and go celebrate Katie's birthday. So remember, the only person that has to like the sound and sight of your system is you. 
So happy listening, happy watching. Thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Katie Bear. <laughs>